Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting fantasy bubbles and I'm going to be sipping on my Earl Grey tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Cobalt Blue, Titanium White, Fluorescent Pink, Chrome Yellow, and Burnt Umber, which I like to call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number eight um, synthetic brush, and I have a number one synthetic round brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our background black. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and I'm going to be using black paint. <laughs> so I'm going to be just using long continuous strokes to get to apply my paint. You could certainly use any type of brush stroke that you want, but what I do recommend when you're doing a flat background like this that you try and keep your brush strokes consistent throughout the whole thing. You can certainly with black go in different directions because black is a good coverage, but when you're um, going for that, that finished type of look, if you can just make sure that you have nice consistent thickness throughout your paint, what that'll do is that'll help to prevent the visual um, effect of seeing your brush strokes. So if you can continue to have a nice even coat throughout the area, that'll give you a nice, a nice flat look when it ends up drying. And again, black is a really good co color to um, cover, so you'll probably only need one layer to get it done. And some people do like to utilize the um, pre-primed black canvases when, you're, when you want to use a black background, which is great. However, the ones that you buy um, from the art supply store or online that have pre-primed black color, that is just a primer, which means it's not... It's only, um, it's designed to help the paint adhere to the canvas. It's not designed as the final layer of the painting. So if you choose to use one of those, you're gonna want, and you don't paint over it, you're gonna wanna use like a clear coat varnish or something at the end just to seal in that primer and make sure that it ages properly without, um, without doing any harm from the, from the natural environment. And then once you get this all done, you could certainly paint the edges or the sides of your canvas, but we are going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our bubble maker our bubbles and our fantasy characters. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is when you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, my bubble blower maker thing is going to be over here and it's going to be blowing my bubbles kind of in this direction. I'm going to have my largest bubbles. I'll have four big bubbles, which will be where my characters um, kind of are in. And then all the other ones are just going to be accent type of bubbles throughout the, throughout the place. So what I'm going to first do is put my bubble maker in place. So on the left hand side, you're going to want to find yourself about halfway up or down the canvas and come in maybe about a half of an inch or an inch. Make yourself a little bit of a horizontal line. And then I'm going to do the same thing down maybe about two inches away from the bottom. And then I'm going to connect these two with a really long type of oval. It doesn't have to be anything perfect at this point. We're just going to give ourselves a, a really tall oval. And then I'll connect it to the bottom. Let me just move my canvas a little so we can see the bottom of my canvas. I'm just going to kind of give myself this little bit of a handle for my, for my bubble maker or something like that. And then I'm going to have my first bubble is going to kind of come out of here and I don't want it to go too, too far over in my canvas. So I'm going to, if this is about halfway left or right of my canvas, I'm going to come to the left of that, maybe about an inch, inch and a half. That'll be the farthest part out that I put my bubble. And I want it to kind of look like it's coming out um, in the way that bubbles do <laughs> out the bubble mirror. I don't know how else to explain it. So I'm just going to start kind of almost at the bottom of this opening and then give myself kind of an upward curve and then it's just going to make its way over into this vicinity over here and then just kind of bring myself up. The beautiful thing about bubbles is they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. So as especially these kind of like soap bubbles that you make out of these bubble makers, <laughs> they can come out in all different warped type of shapes. So don't feel like yours has to be um, perfectly circle. And then I'm going to have another one in this vicinity. This is going to be for um, my second character. So I'm going to just go pretty close to um, this one over to the right a little bit and maybe down about to here and maybe over, I don't know, about here. So something like that will just kind of give me a barrier as to where I want my my bubble shape. <laughs> Again, doesn't have to be perfectly circled. Just something like that will do the trick. I'm going to have another one up in through here. So I'm going to go up from here, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe it's about four or five inches tall and maybe about the same kind of width. And again, doesn't have to be the same size as mine. You can certainly utilize your own bubble shape thoughts to to create these and then I'm going to have one more big one up in through here this will be my fourth one so I'm going to just go to the right of this maybe about an inch inch and a half and I'm going to go really close to the edge of my canvas over in through here maybe that's the top maybe that's the bottom so then we'll give ourselves this oval-ish circle-y type of shape in through here and then I'm just going to make a whole bunch of other bubbles throughout the rest of my canvas. So these are just going to be kind of extra little bubbles that are going to give my um, kind of fill out the the canvas in a way that will have a good composition so it's not just these main bubbles. These will just kind of add an extra bit of story to it. So maybe a couple small ones something like this, maybe a little tiny one down in through here. Now I'm just going to do some basic shapes for my characters that are within my bubble. So I'm going to have a unicorn, a fairy, a butterfly, and a dragon, but you could certainly make yours into all butterflies or all fairies, whatever works for you. So I'm going to do my, um, my unicorn somewhere in through here. So I'm going to give myself, I'm going to start with just a circle for the head in through here. Then I'm going to put another circle a little away from this, maybe something like that. That'll be the, the nose portion. And then I just kind of connect these two like this. And then I'm going to give myself a, a unicorn horn. Going to give a couple of little ears, something like that. And then I'm going to give myself the, the back of the neck like that. This is going to be the mane and hair and stuff like that so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to give myself the little chest area, something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just giving ourselves some basic shapes. For my fairy, I'm going to start with my fairy wings. I'm going to have these fairy wings coming out the center of her back. So something like this. Almost looks like a little flower to me. Like this. Then I'll put a little head 
on her. Maybe she's going to have a bun on the top of her head. And then I'm just going to have her, her, uh, the rest of her body's just going to be like a dress that's going to come down and kind of flow out into the bubble. For my butterfly, I'm going to have it kind of to the side or kind of flying up that way. So I'm going to do one side of the wings that's closest to us like this and just kind of give myself some nice wing like that. I'll do the second set of wings that's on the far side in a similar shape but at an angle and we're just going to see the little edges of it, something like this. And then I'll have just a little bit of a line for the body like that. And then for my dragon, I'm going to have my dragon is going to be, I'm going to do it similar to how I did my unicorn with starting with um, a circle for the head. So something like this will get me started for the head. I'm going to bring um, kind of like a diagonal type of shape out in through here and bubble out the little end to make the, the nostrils of my dragon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over it almost kind of like in a quick S type of shape to give the chest of the dragon, something like this. And then I will do um, some little spiky things on the head. So nothing much, just kind of something that gives the uh, impression of a, of a dragon. Gonna bring a little neck down in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of beautiful wings on it. So I'm gonna start somewhere in through here and bring this up in this vicinity and then just kind of bring it back down like this. You can certainly, and we're using chalk. So if you're doing this and you're like, oh, I need to make a correction, that's what chalk is for. Just make the correction however you feel needs to be. And we can, you can do it with water or whatever you need to do to make the adjustments. And then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, make any adjustments that you need to, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our bubble maker stick thing. So I'm gonna be using my, oh, I said I was gonna use my medium brush, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use my small brush. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using yellow, uh, pink, white, and probably some brown as well. So what I really wanna do is I'm gonna make the outside of the stick, which is closest to us, this left-hand side, it's gonna be a little bit wider, and then I'm gonna have a little bit of an inside piece to the stick that'll be on the far side and then we'll have the little handle. So I want mine to be like a bright peachy type of color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix some of my pink with some of my yellow and that's gonna give me this really vibrant type of peach color that really makes me excited. <laughs> Some some bright colors make me excited, some don't, peach does. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this type of color in through here. I'm going to give myself a nice thin coat with this um, on the exterior part to give myself the, the colored part to so we can see it. This left side is gonna be about twice as wide, the bright part as the right side. So you can certainly kind of steer yours into whatever thickness that you want it. The, um, if you want it to look like it, we're seeing it from an angle, this left side would make sense to have it a little bit wider or brighter, so to speak. The right side will, um, the left side is, I don't know what side I said. I meant the left side is wider and brighter than the right side. So that way it'll look like it is closer to us. I'm gonna bring this all the way down to the bottom and I'm painting right over my chalk. Um, you might be able to see your chalk underneath or it might blend right into the paint. Um, if you come to a point where, where you don't want to go all the way to the edge of your chalk mark, that's okay. Just you can erase it with water um, and you don't have to go all the way. That's totally fine. So once I've got this in here, it doesn't even need to be a perfect coat. I'm just kind of slowing down so I can have some nice crisp edges to it. What I'm going to do now with my dirty brush is I'm going to pick up a touch of brown paint with my um, peach mixture. This is going to give me the inside kind of shadowed area on this right side. So I just have my peach color with a little bit of brown on my brush so I can get kind of a darker interior for this right hand side so it looks like it's almost in the shadow type of area. And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna pick up more of my 
bright peach and give myself a little tiny line on the edge of this right hand side. So this will make it look like the edge has um, a little bit more brightness to it. So I just kind of picked that up and I'm putting it right on top of my chalk mark, which makes it look just a little bit brighter. You could, I suppose, put a little bit of white on your brush if you wanted that to look even brighter. But right now I'm gonna add a highlight to this left-hand side so this will make this pop out even more. So I'm going for my peach plus white on my brush. And this is gonna give me this really bright highlight up in this top um, left-hand corner of this bubble making stick. So this is really gonna make it look like it is popped out towards the viewer. I'm just gonna kind of slowly blend it in towards this right-hand corner. And then I'm going to get this bright area to just fade down into um, the, the regular peach color that we had created. So I'm just kind of lightly pulling it down. I'm gonna also put a touch of a highlight down here on this bottom left-hand corner. So this will also make the whole side pop out. And this one doesn't have to be necessarily as bright as the top one. I'm gonna pick up some of my, um, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some of that um, peach so I can get these two sections to just make sure that they have good enough coverage and that they blend in together. And then this bottom little portion of the stick, you might wanna just do another layer of that peach on top of it, just to make sure that you have a good coverage. I wouldn't go too, too bright down here because it, this'll would make it look like it's in the shadow if it's a little bit darker than up there. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you feel like you've got those highlights on there and you feel like you've got this, um, edge over on the right hand side. I might have to amp that up a little bit so we can see it just a little bit more. And then once you've got that done, we are going to be utilizing our, um, we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat of our fantasy characters. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a light tan type of color to start so we can use that as the foundation for our beautiful characters. So I've already pre-mixed myself a little bit so you can see where I'm headed. How I got there was I just utilized some brown plus a little bit of white paint probably about half and half equal parts of each will get you into the zone um, that I'm kind of looking for. And the reason why I'm doing a base coat of tan is so I have somewhere to go with my light highlights. So I don't wanna go all the way white to start. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of a tan color and this is gonna allow me to get um, a good foundation so we can build some dimension on top of it. So once you've got the tan color that you want, what I'm gonna do is I'll put a little bit on my brush and then I'm gonna dip my brush in water, even if it's dirty water, <laughs> and then I tap it off on my paper towel. So what this does is it puts a lot of fluidity into my brush and it allows me to um, get some nice soft painterly strokes and some that might be a little bit translucent or see-through so I can um, start the dimensional process. So I'm gonna start with my butterfly because it's kind of a nice simple one to start with. And what I'm gonna do is first, I'm just gonna um, start my wings by giving myself a little bit of an outline where that chalk mark is. So just kind of following that chalk mark all the way around. I wanna have nice loose kind of sketchily lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of bringing it out from this center area. Maybe I'll have a little bit of a lighter spot along this edge in through here. And again, I'm just utilizing um, some water on my brush so I can get these soft kind of translucent marks within the, within the um, object. If you wanted to use a solid color, you could certainly do that. Um, however, it will, you won't be able to see through it. So you can utilize whatever color you want. Maybe you wanna add lots and lots of dimension. I want all of mine to kind of just have a wispy airiness to them. So that's why I'm utilizing 
the um, water on my brush as well to give me this bit of transparency so I can see through it. And then I'm just gonna kind of allow myself to give the head of my butterfly a little bit of information. So I just did, or the body, I'm just gonna also bring out a couple of little antennas. So just a little bit of my watered down paint. Yeah, that works out well. I don't need much to it at all. It's looking pretty. I'm gonna move, uh, let's see, let's go up to the dragon. So my dragon, Again, I'm just going to utilize this color in order to give myself the, the shapes and kind of start the process. I'm starting with the head, bringing it into that nose, getting rid of my, my chalk marks as best as, as I can. If you come across an area where you want to save that chalk mark for whatever reason, you can just kind of paint around it. We'll be putting little eyes and all kinds of other details on this. Um, on this cool dragon in a little bit, but right now just kind of getting that base coat on there. Um, as I go down into this chest area, what I'm gonna end up doing, oops, I need to just kind of reload my brush with a little bit of my color plus water. What I'm gonna end up doing is I want it to kind of look a little bumpy, like he's got the, um, I don't know, ribs or scales or something like that in the, in the front. So I'm just gonna kind of pull in these little kind of curved marks um, and if you don't get that perfect don't worry about it because when we go to do the details we'll be able to enhance that then I'm going to just reload my brush I'm going to start with this outside um, wing I guess is what it would be referred to and just kind of bringing this down maybe bringing it into the body a little bit and you can see as I'm doing this I'm utilizing my color in order to almost kind of outline and give myself some information on these particular pieces of the of the character. So I don't need to you I don't need to color in the whole character a hundred percent. I'm just because I have that black as a background. I can utilize just a little bit of that color. Like I want to um, put a little bit in through here. So I just added a bunch of water to my brush. So I've got the color in here, but it's not as vibrant as those little ribbed areas that I made. So this way you can have varying tones of this color throughout, which helps you to develop that, um, that those dimensional elements to it. I'm going to move to my fairy right now. So again, I'm just using that tan plus some water on my brush. I'm going to start with my wings. And of course, you can modify the shape of these as much as you want. Maybe as you go through this process, you want yours to be more on the round side as opposed to the pointy side like I have mine. So just feel free to explore whatever you want your little fairy to look like. And then I'm just gonna use these nice wispy kind of brush strokes in the center here just to give myself a little bit of movement throughout them. I'm gonna do the same thing with her head. Um, so I'm gonna just bring her head up in through here. I think I want her bun to go a little bit taller. So yeah, there we go. That, that does it for me. And then just kind of bring this down. So you can see some when I'm meeting um, one section to the next, you can leave a little bit of that chalk mark open and still visible um, if you need that for, um, for a visual barrier for yourself. And then as I go into her dress portion here, again, I can just leave a little bit of darkness towards where it's going to meet the um, wings. And I'm just really bringing this down in a nice, light, airy way. Just added a little bit more water to my brush so I can have some of this translucency in this color. And you can see my hand gets messy and I, I run through that chalk all the time. So you'll see that all over my canvas, I'll have this residue of chalk mark, but we can erase that later with some, with some water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move to my unicorn here so again just a little bit of my tan plus water on my brush so my unicorn these two lines right in through here of these circles those were just intended for um, for purposes of getting the right shape I'm gonna erase those with a little bit of water with my medium brush just so they don't confuse me as I'm in that painting process it, this one here you could leave because the mane is going to go on top of it, but these two circles, you just want to um, not get too confused with them. So I just erase them. I have my water plus tan on my brush, and again, I'm just going to kind of um, paint 
all of the little pieces that I want. So I've got my ears, I've got my horn, I've got my face in through here. And as far as like the nostril and the eyes and stuff like that, we'll be adding little bits of information to those in a future step. So right now I'm just kind of getting this main area in here with some nice translucent paint. You can see how maybe it was a little bit darker at the nose and then it, I got it to go a little bit um, more see-through as it came in through here. So that's a beautiful thing about utilizing a transparent type of paint with this with like with a little bit of water is you can start it pretty strong in one area like this chest and then I can just rub it out and make it dissipate into the darkness and that provides me with a really easy way to get some nice um, dimension to it like right under this jawline I want it to be dark because that makes it look like a like a shadow so if I add a little bit of brightness where I want that jaw to be, that's going to allow that shadowy area to pop out underneath the um, underneath the neck. And then I'm just going to utilize this tan to start the process of the mane. So tan is on my brush right now, and I know that I want to have this mane really flowing out of my um, out of my bubble maker, <laughs> and I want it to have some movement. So right now, I don't have as much water on my brush, which is making it look more um, full and has more depth to it. So I'm really just kind of coming from the top part of the back of the head and bringing this mane down and in a flowing type of direction as to it going into my or out of my bubble maker and again you don't need to do it a hundred percent just these light airy lines will will get the party started and then maybe I'll put a little bit of wave into it I'll put a little bit of this mane coming out from um, the the forehead as well so this will help us when it comes to um, putting the eye and stuff like that on so we won't have to do as much detail we'll we'll cover a lot of it with this pretty mane that we've got coming on and then you can do any little modifications you want I'm gonna see if I need to make my um, my horn any pointier I'm gonna erase my chalk mark right now so my horn is a little bit um, flat or um, not pointy <laughs> so I just erased my chalk so I could see that and I'm gonna just kind of bring it out in a point there we go that makes me happier all right so we are going to be utilizing our um, the same brush for the next step so once you've got your base coat of your characters on you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the details on the fairy and on the unicorn. I'm going to be using my small brush. Um, the colors I'm using are white, probably some tan, a little black, brown, and some other colors. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly the vibrant colors I'm going to be using. That's why I'm on the fence right now, but I'm going to call them out as I, as I use them. I'm going to start with my fairy first. Um, so how I'm going to approach this is I'm just going to put, I'm going to pick a color, whatever color that might be, put a little bit of that in the, in the wings themselves, and then I'm going to do some highlights and shadows on the head and the body um, and some little highlights on the wings. I'm just looking for some faint detail just to make it so it's not so flat. So I think for my wings, I'm going to go for a, a greenish type of color. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit of yellow and add a little bit of blue to it. So this is going to give me this really pretty green. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lightly brush in some of this green color into these wings. As we do the colors on the bubbles, you'll notice that this green will appear as the yellow blends with the blue when we do the bubbles. So it's nice to have it as a, as a complementary color in one of these. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now and I'm going to go in for some little um, details on her head. So I've got brown on my brush right now. I'm going to kind of underline where I want that bun to go. Maybe a little bit of black too. So brown and black around my brush right now. And then I'm going to just kind of give a little bit of movement in her hair. Now I'm going to pick up a touch of white paint 
to give myself a little bit of a highlight on the front of her head. Maybe a little bit more brown on my brush for the back of this bun in through here. There we go. Just make sure I have a, a good amount of um, diversity in the color on her hair. So again, I just added a little bit of highlight with white on that right hand side. And then I added some brown and black on the back side. So it would look like there's a little bit of um, shadowy areas on her hair. Then on her um, wings, I'm just going to add a little bit of white paint to the uh, to the tips of these wings. So maybe they're glowing from somewhere, wherever the light source is coming from is just kind of beautifully touching the tips of these wings. And if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of black and brown on your brush if you felt like you wanted to separate the interior of these wings anymore. This would just be if you wanted there to be a little bit more dimension in the um, in the center area of them. You might need it or want it, you might not. Um, and that can also be used to get rid of any of your little chalk marks around the edges. So black and brown would help to get rid of those. And then on her dress portion, I'm just gonna do some little highlights. So I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna do maybe a little bit of a highlight on um, the edges, maybe a little bit on her butt. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown paint right now just to get that to blend in a little bit. Not doing much at all, just kind of making sure I've got a little bit of dimension in through here so that way it looks like it's something other than the background. And that's all I'm gonna do for her. I'm gonna move to my horse right now. So I'm gonna approach the horse with um, same color palette. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to add um, color, additional colors except for to the um, horn itself, but I'm going to start with a little bit of brown and black on my brush so I can put the eye and the nostril and maybe a little mouth in place. So my eye I think would be kind of hidden a little bit under this um, mane in through here. So I'm just going to rub in, I need a little bit more black on my brush, rub in a little bit of a dark eye in through here and just, you don't even really have to do much. We're just giving the impression of, of it. In through here, I'm gonna put my nostril, so just a little bit of black and brown, maybe somewhere in through here. And if you go too dark, you can always bring back some of your background color. So uh, maybe a little bit on the, on the mouth and through there. I'm gonna pick up some of that tan color to just kind of make sure this looks nice and subtle and that we don't have it too, too bold, we just want a, a nice light area. I'm gonna pick up some of my tan plus a little bit of white to highlight the top of the nose and get the bridge of the nose to be a little bit brighter so we can um, really see the detail of that and it makes it look like it's got that flat kind of muzzle that, that horses tend to have and you could certainly put more, or unicorns. <laughs> which have a similar structure to horses. <laughs> so something like this will, will help see me through that. And again, if you want to or need to put more, you know, if you feel like you want it a little bit brighter, you can certainly just keep coming back with that original color or duller, add that on top of it. And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put some color in my horn. So I'm gonna go for some pink. I'm just picking up some pink and just gonna make some little pink stripes down my horn and then I'm going to pick up some white and put some little white stripes down my horn. So this way when I go to do the colors um, on the bubbles later these areas that we're adding these highlights to will really pop out. And then the same thing with the mane. I don't really need to do much to it. I just want it to be a little bit brighter so when I put the colors on later it will pop out the colors of the bubble. So I'm going to just wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be using tan plus white on my brush to get these areas to really stand out of the um, of the mane themselves. So tan plus white on my brush at the same time. And this is going to allow me to also put a lot of movement in this mane. And then when we add the, again, the colors 
from the bubbles on top of this, it'll be really quite beautiful and these colors will stand out. The colors that we put on top will really stand out because they'll have this light base to them. And you can get this hair or this mane to be as free flowing as you want. And then that's really kind of all I'm gonna do on here, just making sure that I've got some of this bright mane in front of the ears. You could put a little bit of darkness around the ears, which actually I might do, so hang tight for a second. <laughs> but I'm putting some of these longer pieces, maybe even a piece kind of goes in front of that eye, in front of the eye to make it look like he's in the wind and he's got lots of movement to to the, the mane, something like this, and just have fun with it. If you don't, if your eye isn't awesome, you can just hide it with some beautiful pieces of, of mane. So that's a great a great disguising remedy in through there. So actually I'm going to put a little bit of brown and black just to give myself a little bit of dimension by these ears to um, get them to pop out just a little bit more and have their own kind of way about them. And maybe a little bit lighter on the jaw, just picked up that original tan color. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And then once you've got that done, you can do any little tweaks that you want. We are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the details on our butterfly and our dragon. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are um, black, brown, white, and some other colors. Because <laughs> again, I know that that's the base coat or the little details, the highlights and shadows, but as far as the additional colors, I might just decide that uh, as I go along. So I'm gonna do my butterfly first. And again, what I'm really looking to do is kind of add a bit of highlights. So that way when we add those colors on top from the, from the bubble, those highlighted parts will pop even more. And then if there's any decorative elements that I want that I don't feel I'm gonna be able to get from coloring the bubble, I'll add those. Like my butterfly, I think I want a couple of polka dots on the edges of the wings, and I'll probably have a nice highlight in through here. So I know that I won't be doing those polka dots when I'm coloring the bubbles, so I will do those now. So I am going to, um, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna use pink for my polka dots. So I'm putting some pink on my brush and I just wanna do some decorative kind of um, dots along the edge or the corner of my, of my butterfly. So just these little tiny polka dots that will give me that decorative element that I would like on my butterfly. And then once I've got that, and you can of course decorate yours what, whatever way you want, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put some white paint on my brush so I can get some little highlights, maybe a touch of a highlight in my um, antennas, maybe a little bit on that body part, maybe a little bit at the top side of these wings, just so as they're catching the, the light from wherever, they can be a little bit brighter, maybe a touch in through here. And then um, if I feel like there's any areas that need to be taken care of with chalk, um, I can utilize a little bit of water or black and brown, whatever I want to kind of get rid of any little chalk areas um, within that butterfly that I feel are unnecessary at this point. That's all I'm gonna do for the butterfly. I'm gonna move on to my dragon now. So my dragon, same kind of approach Gonna look for the areas that I want to be brighter and any areas that I wanna add color to that I don't feel that I would be able to accomplish during the bubble coloring process. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of blue and white on my brush um, because I wanna add a little bit of um, detail to the wings and the little spikes on the on the back of the dragon's head. So I have blue and white on my brush right now. I feel like I wanna put a little bit of decorative element in these um, wings. So that's where I'm just really softly kind of um, wisping it in here so it r looks nice and natural as far as dragons go. <laughs> and then um, I'll add a little bit of this to the, to the 
spiky part on the head. So just a little bit of blue and white. I'm gonna add a couple of little spikes in through here that are gonna add just a really cool um, design element to it. Maybe I'll even put this blue and white on this chest part. Again, just to kind of add some really um, interesting elements to it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna add some, oh, I need an eye and a nostril. So I'm gonna go a little bit of black and brown like we did on the unicorn. I'm gonna have my eye, it looks like I already almost accidentally have one right here, so that's where I'm headed with that one. I'm gonna have that eye there, maybe a little tiny nostril in through here. And I kinda want some, some smoke or something coming out, so I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna put some of that tan color plus water on my brush. So I have a little bit of the tan and water and I'm gonna give myself this translucent like smokiness coming out of his nostril. So that'll give me some nice authentic dragon smoke. <laughs> then I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some white paint and again similar to how I did my um, my unicorn, I'm gonna add this bright highlight on the top of the muzzle part of my dragon, maybe some in this front um, area where I feel it would get some light. I'm gonna bring some of this white in towards those spiky areas. And again, decorate it whatever way is looking fancy to you. You don't have to do yours the way, maybe you want yours to be like a phoenix or something and have bird type wings and and red kind of colors. You can really just explore your creative juices. Maybe a little bit of highlights there, a little bit of white on this chest. Maybe I'm gonna pick up some of that tan color because I feel like I want this cheek to have a little bit more color in it. Yeah, there we go. I didn't want that to be too see-through so you can always add another layer of the um, of that tan if you feel like you want to get it to be a little bit brighter and then I just need to get rid of any of my pencil marks making sure that I can see this wing really nicely in front of the rest of it um, and then once you've got this done we are going to be using the medium brush for the next step so you can just put this small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our bubbles. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. You could really use any size brush that you're comfortable with. You might wanna go for a smaller brush when you go to the littler ones. You might even be wild and crazy and brave and wanna go for a big brush when you're doing these um, larger ones. So wherever your comfort zone is. The biggest trick to doing what I'm gonna be doing is you want to have transparent or translucent paint. So in order, I'm going to be using my pink, yellow, and blue. And in order to tell whether or not your paint is translucent or transparent, you can test it. So I just picked up a little bit of pink paint. I'm going to test it up in this bubble in through here. So if I can see that black behind it, that means that it's transparent. If I couldn't see the black behind it, that would mean that it is not transparent. So you just wanna make sure that you can see, see behind it. Um, and that way, when you get to, well, I'll even show you on my horse in through here. So if I, if I put this pink on top of my horse, I can see my horse and I can see the black behind it. So that tells me that my paint is transparent. So if you're unfamiliar with that, I, pr I recommend that you test it before you go painting on top of, especially these four characters that you just did, otherwise they'll disappear on you. <laughs> so transparent paint, what I'm gonna end up doing is just rubbing in a whole bunch of color splotches throughout all of these bubbles with these three colors. And what that's gonna look like is when, if you ever blew a bubble with like soap, how it has that kaleidoscope of colors around it. That's what this appearance is gonna be. So I'm gonna start with my pink since I have it on my brush already. And I'm just gonna take each bubble and just kind of, you can go right up to the edge of it, something like that, and then just rub in that color. You don't have to do the whole bubble. You can do just little bits of the bubbles. You can, I'm gonna do some over in through here, some over in through here. I'm going right up to my, um, 
my chalk mark and you can even paint into your chalk mark. If your paint is really thick and is not spreading well for you, you can certainly dip your brush into water or you can add and wipe it off on your paper towel or and or you can add a bit of liquid medium to your paint and that's going to allow it to be more translucent. It'll also allow it to be more um, fluid and you'll be able to spread it farther, but you can really do a couple of, you know, different methods in order to do that. So when you get to your characters, you can paint right over them. So that's the beauty of this. This is what's going to make it look like these characters are inside of a bubble because we're adding these additional colors on top of it. So you don't have to color the whole thing. I'm going to be adding additional colors in a minute, but right now just starting with my pink, maybe I've got a big pink area in through here with this one. And you can see as I'm doing it, it will get darker as it dries, but just kind of getting the paint on here and maybe doing a couple of sections of each color on these bigger bubbles, that'll help to sell the story of it having, re you know, a lot of information and have it really kind of shiny and have a lot of excitement in it. So doing some good big areas over there. And I think I'm done just these little guys over here. I'll just kind of dab in a little bit of my pink, something like this, because I know I'm going to have the other colors on top of it. So I don't need to do too much. I don't need to color the whole thing with the pink. And you might find there's areas where you can see your chalk mark a little bit below it. Um, if that's the case, Wait, we've got more, um, we've got another step to go on top of these bubbles that will help to eliminate your, um, the chalk mark on the edges. But if you need that to be gone, you can certainly just kind of keep building the paint until you can't see it anymore. I'm going to put some of this pink over on this edge over in through here and your bubbles might change shape throughout this process they might get bigger they might get more round that you know they can certainly take on new you know warpiness as you go through this process because they're bubbles you know and we're just we're just painting and having fun with them so we can certainly make that shape change as much as 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 much as we want it to i'm coming over here i'm going to put a big pink area over my unicorn's face into here and i'm really just kind of scrubbing the paint on um getting it all the way to the edges and again you don't have to do the whole thing as i get towards this area in through here i can put it in the center area like this but i don't want to cross over this left exterior area because that's kind of my barrier as to there's no bubbles on the left of this and this is the um exterior kind of piece to it so i'm not going to bring that um i don't want that color to kind of cross that plane over in through there and then just maybe a little bit up in through here and then once you've got what you feel to be enough of this color then we're just going to kind of move on to the next color so i'm going to pick up some blue paint right now i didn't even wash my brush but if you felt it was necessary for you to wash your brush you certainly could and they don't even have to go in the same color pattern like you don't have to have pink on one side and uh, always on the right side and blue always on the left side you can certainly just mix it up and they can the colors can cross over each other so that's the beautiful part of this translucent paint too is you can get these colors to intermingle with one another and if the purple crosses over the pink or the blue crosses over the pink it's going to end up looking purple so you can really just explore the um the differences in this this paint so my blue right there looks pretty darn thick and not see-through so i might have too much on my brush so i just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and so i can get this to make sure that i have that translucency that i want and again if it was too thick i could add a bit of um, water and or um, liquid medium to it. Just going to get this one up in through here. You can see my chalk marks are slowly disappearing as I go through this process. Picking up a touch more of my blue paint. Going to put a big area in through here. And this is just, it's a fun um, process. You might find as you're doing it that 
you want to do more than one layer. So you get done one layer and let it dry because it'll dry probably darker than you had anticipated and then just put another layer on. So you just kind of keep building it until you've got that vibrancy that you want. Any areas that you have chalk on the outside that of your bubble that you don't want, just wait um, until we're done, fully done the process because you'll be able to just erase those with a little bit of water at the end or you can just put paint, paint a little black on top of them or whatever. These tiny bubbles, just kind of giving them a little bit of color just to make sure that we've represented all the colors within them. Maybe this um, one's got some good blue over on this side. And again, because the colors are transparent, it really, it really makes it a fun process because you get to add these, you know, this kind of shininess to them without doing much work. It's really um, provides this really neat effect where you get to just add this, this bit of information, letting that, um, that object that we painted on the inside still show through. Like I just put a little blue in through here and that wing started to turn a little bit blue, which is very pretty in my opinion. So again, I'm just enjoying the process. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of blue on this one, especially down in this area. And then I just have a couple more colors. I wanna, I wanna hit the yellow, um, which I might mix with my blue a little bit, so I'll get the appearance of green. And then it's it's really gonna be as much as you want to put on there. Maybe I'll put some, some blue up at the top of the, the horse in through here. Um, I'm thinking that's a good amount of blue for me. And then without washing my brush, I'm picking up some yellow. So I know that the blue and the yellow on my brush is gonna make a bit of green. So when I start this process of the yellow, I'm gonna have some areas of green that are gonna be very, very interesting throughout the process. And if you're going through it and you want more green, just pick up those two colors at the same time. Or you can utilize the green that we made for the, um, for the fairy. So you can explore those colors. I might tap back into the peach that we used for the um, for the bubble maker because I really like peach, as I said earlier. <laughs> but you can, again, just have fun with whatever colors are speaking to you. You can make this as fun as you want. I think I'm gonna, um, and do I want some more green? Yeah, I think I want some of this green over in through here. I just like the prismatic type of look of these colors so that's what happens in a rainbow in a rainbow you're going to see all of these colors as one shifts from from one color to the next and that's what's going to make this look really nice and natural so do i want any more green yeah i think i want a little bit of green in these guys here too maybe just a teeny tiny bit and then i know i'm gonna I know I'm gonna go full on into my yellow in a minute. But <laughs> I'm digging this, this greenish type of look. So I still have the yellow and the blue on my brush right now at the same time. And you just kind of keep playing. So I'm, I am gonna wash and dry my brush so I can get myself some clean yellow. So washing and drying my brush, picking up some yellow paint. And just making sure that I have some yellow represented in some of these areas. So I think maybe a little bit of yellow in through here. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Maybe crossing, ooh, it crossed over the pink and now I've got this beautiful orange kind of color. Maybe a little bit in through here. Ooh, I'm picking up some of my orange too. So I just picked up some of that orange. I want a little bit in my, mm, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> these colors. I really like it when they do start, you know, make, making me all happy and this, is, and this is what's happening. I'm getting all happy with the colors on my unicorn. So that's, that's good in through there. I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I'm gonna go in for maybe a little bit of yellow on top of here, making sure that I've got all my colors the way that I want them. And you might, you know, don't um, not paint over all of your, um, your, your characters. Don't avoid your characters, I think is a better way to say it, because when, when we add these colors on top of them, that's what's gonna make them look like they are behind or inside that bubble. If you were to just avoid painting on top of them, they may end up looking like they're in front of the bubble as opposed to 
inside the bubble. So feel free to, you know, continue that painting process and make sure that you cover the, the whole character or most of it. So that way it doesn't look like you have missed any of it and that it's on the outside. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep um, getting these, finishing them up. And then once we're done with this, we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So I'm just gonna kind of finish painting this in, in through here, maybe getting a couple of more of the, the bright areas in these bubbles up in through here. And know that when we do our um, final details on these bubbles, they will look brighter and have more information in them. Right now, we're just getting that base coat onto them. So they will look a little bit dull until we um, finalize them with the with the really bright, vibrant colors that we're gonna do in a minute. So once you've got these done, make any adjustments that you want, and then you can wash, or put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the final details on our bubbles. So this, in essence, is gonna be the reflections all around the bubbles. So these bubbles are floating and they're turning and twisting and they you can see through them and the light is bouncing off of them so the reflections can really be kind of in an assorted way around the bubbles so what i'm gonna it, what i'm gonna do is i'm going to be doing a type of reflection of something in the surrounding area and i'll put it on one bubble and then i'll put it on the other bubbles at different angles. So that way it's gonna kind of be nice and carefree and it'll look like all these bubbles are kind of moving and, and changing position as they are floating through the air. So I'm going to be making some very bright reflections which will highlight the edges of my bubbles and bring form to them because there'll be some curved reflections. When I'm doing this, I most likely in some aspects will go over some of my um, my characters, I'm not going to be terribly concerned about that because that's again going to add to the authenticity of the character being inside the bubble. So where I'm going to start is I'm going to start with yellow. Oh, I'm using my small brush and I'm going to use probably yellow, pink, orange, blue, white, probably not brown and black, but all my other colors. So I'm using white and yellow at the same time on my brush. And I'm gonna want some good fluidity. So if you have thick paint, again, what you'll wanna do is just kind of dip your brush inside your water just to give you that fluidity on your, on your brush. So I'm gonna start on this one in through here and I'm gonna give myself this nice, beautiful reflection along the edge, something like this. I'm gonna bring it down all the way down the bottom. I'm reloading my brush. I like to have a lot of paint on my brush so I can steer this however I want and have nice smooth kind of lines. So for reflective purposes, I find that the lines um, of the reflection tend to be pretty smooth in nature. Um, they can have, they can be like a gradient where they fade off, but the actual line itself kind of um, is nice and smooth. So I'm going to have maybe this come in here. Maybe I'll have a couple of dots trailing off on this one, like it's reflecting something in the in the surrounding area that's got some dots to it. So once I've established what I want for a particular reflection, I'm going to emulate it elsewhere in maybe a um, similar way, but it doesn't have to be the same exact way. So if I've got like a, a yellow and white swirl with a couple of dots, I'll go up to my ho my my unicorn horse <laughs> and do maybe something similar on the top of this one. So I have my yellow and my white on my brush. So I'm going to just kind of outline the top of my um, bubble. Again, yellow and white. I've got a couple of streaks in that one. So maybe I'll put one of these streaks going in through here. And then maybe at the tail of it, I'll put one, two, three little dots to represent a similar reflection to, to that one over there. And then I just kind of finesse it until I have it the way that I want. So that looks pretty good. I'll go over to 
um, my butterfly and do something similar. Maybe this one I've got coming on this side over here. So just my yellow and white line. Then I've got maybe just a piece of it coming here. And then there's my dots. So again, it doesn't have to be at the same exact angle. It doesn't have to be the same exact thickness. It doesn't have to be the same exact brightness. But if you can get something similar in there, it will kind of tie them all together and make them make the viewer feel like they're watching this reflection just being um, transmitted on a different side of the bubble. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one is going to be a similar one down at the bottom of this guy in through here. Maybe the pointy part with the little um, polka dots comes up in through here. One, two, three. Maybe that one's curved a little bit more. So something like that. Maybe we'll get a little edge going on. Whoops, this one's going to grow on me. Growing is fine. Just let it grow. <laughs> and then I, I, on my other smaller ones, maybe maybe these ones don't get as much detail. Maybe maybe I just make these little small quick ones. Maybe, maybe it's just the implication of it. So again, you don't have to, especially on small ones, you can really just even kind of... Um, transmit that same color in somewhere in them and that will that will help to sell the reflective story that is similar so again just yellow and white is where i'm headed here maybe these top ones maybe i just kind of see a little piece of it maybe just a little dot there maybe a little maybe this one comes in this direction maybe this one comes in this direction so Again, just I'm utilizing that yellow and white, and maybe this is just the little dots in through there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another reflection. So I'm actually going to pick up, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to go for white right now. So I have white on my brush. You can do geometric type of shapes. So in, in here, maybe I want this one to be more of like it's reflecting something that's got flatness to it. So I can just pick a section and give myself this um, almost like a geometric type of shape to it. And as long as I can kind of trans translate that elsewhere, that will sell my story. I think I'm going to put a little bit of pink next to this too. So I had white. Now I picked up a little bit of pink next to it. So something like this again will just give me an interesting reflection that I can kind of translate in other places. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of white. Maybe this one I have, maybe this one comes over here and is of a, you know, pointy or kind of flat top type of, of shape. I'm going to actually translate this white on all of them before I pick up that pink again. Just out of brush washing laziness <laughs> that I have. So I've got that little shape that I'm going to do here. Maybe I'll do um, that shape. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll bring it. It's kind of, it can be really anywhere, I guess. I'm just going to maybe put that in through here. With This one's going to be at the side. So again, you can really just have fun with, oh, maybe this one I'm going to have coming up here. So again, this is that white shape, and I'll be putting some pink next to it in a minute just so it can really translate similarly to the first one that I did. Maybe we've got it stuck over here and it doesn't have to be in the same exact relationship to where it was on here. So if this was on the opposite side of the pink, it doesn't have, or the yellow, it doesn't have to be on the opposite side of that. But if you want it to, that's totally fine. It's reflections are fabulous when it comes to putting them in bubbles because the bubbles go everywhere. They can go in any direction. They can be shaped so vastly different. Well, the bubbles can take on, you know, a perfectly symmetrical type of shape or they can be almost like teardrops. So you can just explore having fun with them. Uh, maybe we've got this shape is going to be over in through here and then I'm going to add a bit of that pink in a minute. Right now I'm kind of utilizing my this particular shape to hide some of my chalk mark on these guys in through here. So that's a good utility. I'm going to pick up some of that pink now so I can put a little pink sliver next to these white sections. Again, just so it translates as a similar type of shape. 
So this is just the pink. Oops, I think I have white on my brush as well. So washing and drying it again, getting myself a nice clean pink. There we go. Maybe utilizing this up and through here. And again, I'm not following a real firm system here, but if I put a white mark um, with a pink mark next to it, it will translate as a similar reflection. And again, these are that, that's what the story I'm trying to tell here is that these are reflections. So how in my head, that's the easiest way to do it is to carry the same colors in a similar pattern throughout these reflective objects. And that's the, the, the balls themselves. So now I'm going to go in for a little bit of blue and white. So I'm putting blue and white on my brush. I think I'm going to have a nice bright kind of reflection on the edge of this ball in or bubble in through here maybe a little bit in through here so again just blue and white is where I'm going right now maybe hmm, that's looking pretty good I'm gonna do that over in through here and again you can be very vibrant very very um, bold with your reflections. You can be very subtle. It's going to be wherever your comfort zone is. But right now I'm just adding a bit of a blue and white kind of um, highlight or reflection along the edge of some of these or probably of all of these um, bubbles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to most likely add a nice bright just white kind of reflection on them so that way it'll look like they've got a, a really nice vibrant kind of shine or twinkle from something but right now again just using that blue and white this is helping to give me a nice um outline of sorts on them to get and it doesn't have to be a full outline but it's giving that visual barrier for the um viewer so they can see the edge of these of these bubbles so now that i've got that and i'll I've given that light blue kind of swipe onto all of them. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and pick up some white and give some designated white kind of sparkle. So I think I want to have a fun, almost geometric type of shape one. So I'm coming off this yellow and I'm going to do maybe a couple of progressive dashes and then I'll do the same thing somewhere off of my yellow in through here and just give myself a couple of progressive dashes. Maybe we've got that in through here as well. And again, just another kind of geometric shape that's going to give me um, something to, to guide the viewer's eyes to um, this bubble being in front of those, those objects behind it. Uh, maybe we've got a little bit in through here. Again, on the smaller ones, not terribly concerned. But now I want a quick swipe um, for a highlight. So I just have white on my brush and I'm going to just kind of pick a designated spot, give myself kind of a swipe um, curved mark for a twinkle um, area on the outside of these bubbles, but it, I'm not going towards the edge of them. I'm inside of it a little bit. So just kind of a push and a and a quick swipe to give myself that little twinkle within them. And then fiddle with it all you want. Uh, we do have one more step to go and it's going to be with the small brush. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to go bottom right on this one and I'm going to go with some blue and white on my brush. So I sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool bubbly picture and <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.